Hi guys! In today's video I wanted to share with you a little known fact I learned about guinea pigs a few days ago. There I was researching for video ideas and I started reading about their history and their past connection with us humans when I discovered something fascinating about a certain type of guinea pig. But before I reveal exactly what it is, let's have a bit of background on the history and evolution of guinea pigs, which is pretty interesting in itself. Our little furry potatoes, as they are so lovingly called, are not the only species of guinea pigs out there in the world. Guinea pigs living as our pets today are hugely variable in their appearance and whilst there are over 50 different recognised breeds, all domesticated guinea pigs belong to the same species, Cavia domesticus or Cavia parcellus depending on where you're reading it. Importantly, this domesticated species does not occur in the wild anymore. So anyone who thinks pet guinea pigs have what it takes to live in the wild is completely wrong. To look at the origins of our guinea pig pets, we need to rewind thousands of years ago to South America, where guinea pigs are originally from, and when people started keeping them for food. Shh. This does still happen today in parts of South America, but we aren't going to dwell on that. And it was an important thing to happen because without this, we wouldn't have the guinea pigs that we know and love today. The domesticated guinea pig, or KV, is thought to have descended from one of two wild ancestors, both of which are still alive in the wild today. First up, we have the Brazilian guinea pig, in which we can see some definite similarities with our domesticated piggies. The Brazilian guinea pig is like a streamlined version of our pigs. They are all brown with a gooty colouring, that's where the hair changes colour partway through the shaft and it can help with camouflage. And Brazilian guinea pigs continue to live and thrive in wild grassland habitats. They are the most common species of wild guinea pig and are present throughout South America, but as the name suggests, they are most commonly found in Brazil. The other main species of wild guinea pig is called the montane guinea pig, and I really struggled to find more information on this one, but these live along rivers and marshy areas in not all, but most of the South American countries. Like the Brazilian guinea pig, their coat is usually all one colour, but this does vary depending on where different populations live, from dark red-brown, black, grey and lighter brown. I had thought that perhaps they live at higher altitudes in the mountains, but it turns out that Brazilian guinea pigs can also live in the mountains. Interestingly, studies comparing these species of wild and domesticated guinea pigs found that domesticated animals displayed, in the language of a scientific report, less aggressive but more socio-positive and more male courtship behaviour than their wild ancestors. In addition, they were distinctly less attentive to their physical environment than the wild cavies. I take this to mean that basically domesticated guinea pigs get along with each other better in close quarters and they're also less aware of their surroundings, even though it might not seem that way when we're trying to tame them. And this is a really common finding in studies of domesticated animals, so those ones that could adjust their behaviour started to fit in better. Yes, yes, I know, Pedro. Before we get to the main point of this video, there are two more species of wild guinea pig, and these are the greater guinea pig and the shiny guinea pig. I'm really not making this up, I promise. The greater guinea pig is found along the coastal strip of Brazil and Uruguay. This species is thought to live in moist grassland and marshes. And the shiny guinea pig, for which there is hardly any information about on the internet, is endemic to Brazil and lives in the Atlantic forests. Crucially, all of these wild guinea pigs are known to be fairly abundant where they occur, so on the IUCN red list they are considered to be of least concern, meaning they are at no risk of extinction. This brings us on to our final species of wild guinea pig, and this is one that's not safe from extinction at all. The Santa Catarina guinea pig is actually one of the rarest species on the planet. 
I know, right? When you thought you knew everything about guinea pigs, this comes along. The Santa Catarina guinea pig, also known as Cavia intermedia, lives on a tiny island and has been isolated from the other wild species of guinea pigs for around 8,000 years. The island is located off the southern coast of Brazil and the guinea pigs live on around 4 hectares of it. This is an insanely small area. It's less than 0.02 square miles or 0.04 square kilometers. Each hectare is 100 meters by 100 meters square. So only four of those is a minute area to support the entire population of a species and it is one of the smallest geographic distributions of any mammal in the world. What's more, there are only thought to be between 24 and 60 individuals in total. Because of this, they are considered one of the rarest mammal species in the world. The population was officially discovered by science in 1999 and because there are so few guinea pigs they were initially classed as critically endangered on the IUCN red list and in 2021 they were assessed as largely depleted under the green status assessment which looks at conservation measures and potential recovery of species. Interestingly it's not that the numbers have increased at all it's that the population is thought to be the most the habitat out there can support and it's probably not changed significantly in the thousands of years that they've been there. And the Santa Catarina guinea pigs look very similar to the other wild guinea pigs. They are brown or grey in colour and they mainly feed on grasses on the island. What's different though is that the females usually give birth to just one offspring and the baby guinea pigs are even more well developed than in other species and they take longer to grow up too. There are also no differences in weight and home ranges between males and females. These are all traits of a stable isolated population. So it's probably also likely that they interact with each other in different ways but this hasn't been studied by anyone. And whilst they live in a protected area, this isn't enforced, so there could be some threat from being hunted, but the island is difficult to access by people. There are no real predators on the island either, so the main thing stopping the population from growing anymore is direct competition with each other for food and other resources. And because they inhabit such a small area, there is a high risk of something like a bushfire wiping out the entire species. All of this is super interesting and I wanted to share it with you, give you a bit of history on our piggies and tell you about one of the rarest animals on the planet, which also happens to be a guinea pig. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye bye!